I am Rebecca from Chem Knits, and it is leftovers time. Right here, I have some containers that have a tiniest hint of color, but I believe each of these containers started with one cup of water, with maybe two teaspoons of white vinegar, so we have a lot of acid left in here. And there were maybe 16 cups total, even though you can only see 14 here right now. Uh, at least two of them I transferred into other containers already, the liquid. But I'm pulling all of this water, and there was a little water in this pot to start with, so we probably have 16 cups of water and at least 30 teaspoons of white vinegar in here. But we're going to use this as our dye bath today to dye up some of the leftover dye that I've been saving for a long time. And to explain a little bit about how I've been saving dye. I have a clip that I filmed a while back, and so I don't know if it's going to feel in context, but I'm going to go play that now. Hi everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and I have some leftover dyes right here, not very much, but I'm going to rinse these and add them to my Leave No Dye Behind mixture for 2025. I actually, I think just last week, shared the first video I did with the first quarter of 2025, and I feel like it was half full what was left, but we're already almost full again. And so we'll see if this last little bit takes us over the top. One of the keys here is that I wanna add as little volume as possible to our containers. So I'm gonna be doing things like um, adding water, back and forth to really try to rinse it out and if there are some particles maybe we'll try to leave that behind but we're going to be doing our best and so will we get a hundred percent of the dye no but we should be able to get a fair amount of it now these dyes were mixed um, at 0.5 percent stock solution concentrations, which means that we had half of a gram of dye in 100 milliliters of uh, liquid. And you can see that, you know, we're getting something that looks nice and dark, and I'm getting things all over my hands as well. We're doing the best we possibly can to rinse them out and not increase the volume too much, but of course, we will be increasing the volume of things some. We're just doing our very best. Uh, using these containers is definitely, definitely messy. <laughs> this is why we are in the sink and we're wearing gloves. Oh man, we can take the leftover pigments out of that container as well. But I don't even know if this is gonna be sufficiently different from what we had last time. Um, I have a feeling that, I mean, I definitely reach for the same colors over and over, and therefore have similar colors as, say, dye stocks. Um, and so then a lot of my leftovers may end up being rather similar. I'm definitely not getting everything here. Uh, I'm just trying not to make too much of a mess, you know? Uh, but I figured since I had a lot of color to rinse out that we may as well show this off. This is a lot of like purple color that's going in. We still have more space. I'm probably going to leave that last little bit of dye behind and work on just washing the containers. And we're not quite full and ready, but I just wanted to show her off. Uh, and so, who knows? It is, I think... May 20th today, uh, and so we'll see when it is I actually end up filming, but I'm gonna try to fill it up a little more. And as for what's left, uh, we're gonna give things a decent soak uh, with some soap to try to rinse off everything else we can. I'll probably need to do it in batches, but this is the way I keep getting pigment into that bottle. Whenever that last clip was done, I don't know, but here is our one liter bottle full of leftover dyes. And we have so many different colors in here. 
There's probably a lot of primaries, but if there are, that's good. Because if we have, and I know that there's some deep magenta and Caribbean blue in here. Deep magenta strikes fast, Caribbean blue strikes slow. We're gonna have a color that breaks. But I want to use not just half of the dye, I wanna use all the dye this time. And so <laughs> I think I wanna try knotted yarn, but we're gonna make things up as we go. And I'm very, very excited to finally see what color this is. Here on the counter, I have 200 grams of Knit Picks Stroll Fingering Weight Yarn. This yarn is 75% Superwash Merino Wool, 25% Nylon. The yarn is dry, and I am just gonna tie it into a knot uh, to add some resist. Because when I did this with a mixture of True Black and you know, I'm now not sure if it was true black or if it was Jacquard's jet black, but it was a mix mixture of a fluorescent pink and black, and it broke beautifully when I did this. So that's what we're gonna do here. I do have a third skein of yarn off camera uh, in case, as I struggle to just tie a simple overhand knot, um, I have another skein of yarn off camera that I can pull in if it seems like this color is way more pigmented than I think. Because it very well could be. This is the thing with leftovers. This is definitely not as concentrated as a 1% stock solution. But at the same time, there could be a lot of dye in here. All right, so right now, the color is giving Cabernet. It's seeming like a very deep reddish pink purple kind of color. And now normally I might be a little concerned about adding that volume. Ooh, we got stuff on the bottom. I don't know if you can see. Okay, see how there's like darkness at the bottom of the bottle? You can see the side there and there's the darkness. There's schmutz there. Let's try to rinse this out. There are some dyes that are less soluble than others, and actually, a lot of this, just with a little bit of water, is rinsing out. I'd say that's more like red in color. Deep magenta can be one of those where that happens. Uh, where are my tongs? So I'm gonna add everything in cold, and not with no acid. We have lots of acid in here. But it's gonna be cold, because this is my desire today. So I'm gonna take our knotty yarn, ha ha, add it in, and we're not soaking in that fast, but I'm gonna start dunking it. Now it is feeling and reading very, very dusty purple to me, um, which makes sense. I'm not exactly squeezing on the knot, but I'm just trying to get it wet and a little bit submerged. Right now my gut is saying that we are fine with 200 grams of yarn in here, but we have that third skein of yarn should we end up feeling like it's needed. And we may not end up with a lot of color breaking after all. But you never know, you never know. Um, so I'm gonna move this over to the stove and start heating it up. And gosh, I guess I'll check back in with you in about 20 minutes um, because hopefully we'll see some bubbles on the surface that aren't from me submerging dry yarn in our pot. Cross your fingers for me. I, no matter what, whether or not we see breaking um, or we just have this dusty purple, I think that this is a really pretty color and should have a good saturation amount. I'll see you in about 20 minutes. We are getting nice and steamy. Oh, actually, it's looking like most of the color is in the yarn. Now when I pick this up, the knots are probably gonna tighten and there's still some color in there. You can see some of that resist we have from the knots. I don't know if that's actually a different color than this pink though. Sometimes you can have a condition and we have high acid here uh, because Let's see, 30 teaspoons of vinegar, 
um, is about 10 tablespoons of white vinegar. So maybe it's not that insanely high because uh, we had 16 plus at least four plus more. You know, that's not an insane amount of acid, but sometimes having more acid, I'm doing some very poorly explained back of the envelope uh, calculations in my head. But sometimes if you're starting with more acid, then that can mean that you have colors strike a little faster and therefore breaking can be minimized. This is something that way back with Wilton's Violet confused me at first because the colors were striking faster than I expected. And then over time, as I added more liquid, then the breaking was more dramatic. And so similar, uh, well, I'm not seeing breaking yet. That doesn't mean we won't see breaking, but uh, I guess I'll just have to wait. Now we've probably only been warm for a little while. So let's go ahead and wait 20 more minutes with the heat and then see where we are dye bath wise. And I'm only bothering to cover it because I've had the lid out today because I was using it earlier. So since it's around, why not use it? <laughs> now we're simmering. Let's see. Oh yeah, that di those dye baths have almost completely cleared. What do we see on the yarn? You know, it's mostly just tonal. Still very pretty. There might be some hint of some yellow left in here. You know what I'm gonna do? And today it's a convenience thing. I am gonna leave, I'm going back and forth, yes. I'm gonna leave the yarn in the pot to cool for around an hour or so, and then I'll remove it so we can undo the knot and then conceivably go wash the yarn. Uh, I have turned the heat off. You can see there's still some bubbles going on. Uh, the pot will likely still be warm in an hour when I finally remove the yarn, but this is what's convenient for me today. <laughs> I'll see you in a bit. Okay, I have this situated so you're not really seeing me pull the yarn out of the dye bath. I've not unknotted it yet. I'm just sticking it into some water that I'll be using to wash it. Uh, I also have not squeezed anything out really at all, but I am happy to report our dye bath is that clear. And so all the dye is in our yarn. Okay, now let's try to untie our yarn here. This is so pretty. I know I did back of the envelope calculations before and determined uh, that we didn't have like an extreme amount of acid in there, but I still don't really see breaking. Maybe I'll see more breaking once it's dry, and so therefore we have a little bit more difference, uh, but it's looking like a tonal purple where we've just got depths of the same purple across the, the board. Could be wrong though. It's a little hard to see because the color is pretty darn saturated, which is honestly awesome. <laughs> I mean, this is the thing with a mystery bottle. We did not know how much color we were gonna have. And so that makes it hard to predict uh, what is going to happen. But I just added some blue dish soap and I'm filling up this basin. Okay, and let's see. I'm not expecting to see any color bleeding at all, just because the dye bath was completely clear. Now, of course, the dye bath being clear does not mean we won't see bleeding. We could still see bleeding, but we didn't, and so that's great. Uh, what I'm gonna do now is finish rinsing out the soap. Then I'm gonna go hang up this yarn to dry so we can come back and take a closer look at the colorway once it is dry. But I'm very excited. I went for this new, maybe new favorite resist technique. It's funny because it's not as big of a resist as say, um, dyeing twisted skeins, where you end up having less surface area and yet less yarn exposed to the color in your dye bath. But that's sometimes a good thing if you're only gonna do one layer. 
I do plan eventually to do multiple layers of this technique, and who knows, that video could already be out right now. But anyway, let's go take a look at the finished dry yarn. The dry yarn is super pretty. I have to say though, I'm still amazed with how little color breaking we ended up with. I think in here, I feel some areas that are a little bit more brown and maybe some in here too, where it doesn't just feel like a different depth of saturation of this gorgeous dusty purple. But <laughs> overall, you would think that it was one color. And the thing is, if we had an acid dye that would give us this muted, beautiful purple color, it is a color that would break. <laughs> Just from my experience with a lot of purples, it would have reds and blues and some other pigments in there. So I am very pleasantly surprised with what this average of all of our dyes kind of ended up being. Now the knot gave us a pretty good average of these colors, like there's a pretty inconsistent variegated feel here that is a lot of fun. And I definitely still need to uh, layer knotted colors, like do multiple rounds of knotting and unknotting over and over to see how that turns out. And spoiler alert, or maybe, I don't know when this video will come out in relation to other videos I'm working on, but I had, did just film that earlier today. So eventually that'll come out. <laughs> but now I need to go twist up the yarn. You know, I'm not sure how I'm going to feel with knotting yarn versus other types of resist techniques I have done over the years. And this brings me to another thought. You could layer all the different resist techniques that I've done on top of each other. We could first dye twisted skates. Then we could knot it and dye it. Then we could add zip tie resists and over dye it again. You aren't restricted by doing that same technique on each layer. Now, the more variety you put in, the more chaotic your colorway will end up. But sometimes chaotic, very variegated with lots of colors is so much fun. And so it all really depends on what you like to work with. And if you wanna see me combine all those different resist techniques on one colorway, Please subscribe and turn on the notifications so you never miss a new video. I love to play around with color and yarn and I think we can have a lot of fun experimenting and exploring and you don't want to miss any of it. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and I've already started filling that container of leftover colors again. And I just had a week of vacation so I don't remember what's in there. It's not very much color yet, it's not very full, but I couldn't tell you what pigments are in there. And it's just so much fun. Please let me know what other techniques you would like me to do with this mystery collection of color. Honestly, they're always probably gonna average to be some kind of dusty purple because that's the way averaging colors seems to work out. But you never know. It depends on what I've been using more of recently. So it could be something completely different. And maybe it breaks, maybe it won't. We won't know until we play around with it. And not knowing is part of the fun of collecting these leftovers. But anyway, thank you so much for watching.